And hello, welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We are going to Many Minds Move is One. And it's, uh, I'll tell you what, one of these days, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> well, I was going to say one of these days I'm going to be like, there's a new Jack Earth Spirit and this one sucks. But uh, it's just not going to happen. I mean, it, it's just amazing how this expansion continues to deliver from top to bottom. And I am so glad I really took my time going through these spirits and, and just immersing myself in what they do and how they act and how they um, make you think about this game differently. So many moons, many minds move as one is like the older brother of fangs i guess and it's just nuts in how it uses the beast tokens how it moves them around the board and what it allows you to do let me start with some housekeeping mrs playthroughs is monitoring the chat as always she does an amazing job be very nice to her what you're seeing is on a 25 second delay so anything that you see uh, happened 25 seconds prior. So that usually is not a problem, but in the chat, if things seem a little off, that could be why. Uh, I do have a pretty awesome announcement. Uh, I have uh, been in touch with Mr. Eric Royce himself, uh, and he has graciously agreed to come on to solo playthroughs on January 27th, so that I know it's a month away. That is the last playthrough for the Jagged Earth Spirits that I will be putting on the channel uh, as just featuring that spirit in, a, in this. I mean, again, after that, I'm going to be doing scenarios. I want to get into a double board situation. I want to play with the thematic boards. I mean, the content that will come out uh, on my channel for Spirit Island, there is no end, right? I want to go up levels for the different adversaries. But the last first look at a spirit in a true solo game, it will be on January 27th with Volcano and uh, Mr. Royce will be coming on and spending about 20 minutes with us before that playthrough. So mark your calendars. I'm really excited and we're looking forward to, uh, you know, right now I'm trying to figure out the tech side of that, how I can make that work smoothly and, and, and whatnot, but it's gonna be a pretty cool, cool moment for the channel. So um, let's get into it. Uh, all right, Miss Playthrough, make sure I'm not missing anything on the chat. Story time with Greg. Many minds move as one. A spirit of flocks, swarms, schools, and packs, where the whole moves together in concert to accomplish what the individu individuals in it could not do alone. Unlike weaves a web of souls, its nature leans towards smaller and simpler creatures, and it regards other sorts of animals, including humans, as bizarrely alien in their individuality. While it will communicate with the Dahan, it has shown no ability or inclination to integrate them into itself. While it is willing to sacrifice individuals to protect the whole, it is not a spirit of sacrifice per se. That is a tactic it employs, not the essence of its nature. Uh, and you will notice I said Dahan because I realized I was saying Dahan wrong for the last two years uh, plus, so it's Dahan, and I learned that because I've been listening to Eric Royce's interviews as I get ready for next month and realized that there are many things I was mispronouncing, including his last name. So sorry about that. Um, let's get into it. I am going to be going against either level four Sweden or level four Bradenburg, Prussia. Hey, John, how are you, man? I appreciate your uh, guy project help. So. <laughs> I'll get back to you later, but thanks for stopping in. Um, so level four Sweden or level four Bradenburg, Prussia. And the reason why is I've already filmed Lore and I've already filmed Shroud. And France and Habsburg are both going to be represented in those videos. We've already played against England that's been on the channel. And I've already had a playthrough against Scotland on the channel. And remember, I'm ignoring Russia for the last seven playthroughs as we got through all the Jagged Earth Spirits. Uh, because I didn't think that was the best example of how this different spirits operate so uh and for the record i know I, I think the smart money was on the fact that i was going to hate shroud with a fiery passion i actually really like shroud it's a very very cool spirit um again this this expansion is just bananas so one two three will be sweden four five six will be Bradenburg, prussia i rolled a two let's go to sweden and that will mean that on the 27th we will have volcano versus prussia which is fine me. I'll probably bump it up to a level five just to get a little bananas because why the heck not? All right, so we have, that's the Scotland token. Where is the Sweden Ravage token? Where are you? I don't know. Oh, here it is. Cool. So I'll put that down there. 
So we're going to set our invader deck as the first thing. Uh, Sweden is is has proven to be a bigger challenge true solo than I expected it to be uh, or, or experienced it like, you know, months ago. It That double blight mechanic, the extra damage you have to account for, there's a lot of things that Sweden does that change the math just enough that makes it a very, very uh, big challenge. Um, that said, I think we'll be okay. Many Minds has a lot of tools at its, at its, uh, in its toolbox per se, as far as helping making invaders skip actions, uh, applying defense again against Sweden. Oh, never mind. We'll do that as the final part of setup. So there's there are currently three uh, level. The the invader deck is normal. There are currently three level uh, or, or tier one invader cards on the top of this. We're gonna take one off as one of the last steps of uh, setup. What's up, Mr. Barnett? How are you, sir? Uh, Tony and I played a Zoom game last night. We uh, somehow pulled out a we pulled out victory out of the jaws of defeat. <laughs> we were looking looking pretty ugly. Guess level four speed in there for a while, uh, but managed to uh, to manage to pull it off. All right, let me uh, roll this again up to D twenty. That's a nineteen. There are only sixteen blight of the cards. Here's number two. We're gonna start with two blight on that card. You'll notice a few changes. So. Uh, as again, I've as I always said, I'm going to keep trying to make things better. Um, I do have a pop shield now on my mic, so hopefully that will cut down on some of the breathiness. Uh, I have the light, I've been able to raise that up. I think it gives a better ambiance on the table here, makes viewing the viewing experience a little bit better, plus doesn't blind me as much during a playthrough. So happy about that. And you'll notice I have sleeved up everything. My I played the crap out of this game, and things just started to show a little bit too much wear and tear. So the Invader card are sleeved up, the Blighted Island card are sleeved up, the Fear card are sleeved up, and then I put the event cards in red, uh, primarily because I didn't have the clear sleeves the day I wanted to sleeve them. <laughs> so I might switch them to clear at some point. I probably won't. That's not really worth the effort, I don't think. So the Fear deck is going to be a 3-4-4. Four, four. So it is one of the smaller Fear decks for a level 4 adversary. And it, the ability to get into tier two quickly is is very helpful, especially because of how brutal Sweden can be. Uh, we will shuffle up the event deck. So the thing with many minds is, you know, remembering to use all of the special rules, and, and we'll kind of break that down in a in a minute. But um, the ability to, to get beasts on the table and move them around is pretty cool. Like So one of the special rules is when you gather or push, you can go two, two uh, lands away. It doesn't have to be adjacent, which is really nice. The other special rule, again, I'll kind of read these again, but just for, for a kind of a preview, is your sacred places also count as beasts if you want them to. So that really helps trigger some of your innates. You have five cards instead of four, which is really nice for a couple of reasons. One, I mean, you can get up to... The three card plays by your second turn very easily the cards don't cost that much and the other reason it's really nice is that if you get an event card that needs an element it's a lot easier to just forget a power depending on the power some powers don't forget but depending on the power it's a lot easier to just forget a power because you still have four other cards so if you really want to you know get your cards to aid whatever you need as far as the uh the uh the elements that are, are needed in those event cards, um, you know, it's easier to have, you know, or even to discard too, right? Um, I find the uh, the growth options can get a little wonky. You'll do some things that you wouldn't think about doing with with other spirits, but I'll kind of get into that. Let's figure out what our land's going to be. We are on board six, and it is my favorite. I still just love the look of this board all right so we're gonna put the six dahan on the board or wait i said it wrong again i'm gonna do that all day the six dahan on the board dahan so much it makes so much more sense than dahan who, what, who wants to have a dahan you could be a dahan put the emphasis on the wrong syllable as i am prone to do all right I, know, I guess that's better than when i was uh, anyone saw my uh seventh continent playthrough when i was saying foliage for the first half of that. That was super fun. Uh, all right. <laughs> what? Foliage. No, what was it saying? Foilage. I was saying foilage. Man. <laughs> Sarah's looking at me like I'm bananas, but that's fine. 
All right, your presence, you start with a, uh, a one presence on the board where there is a beast, and then you also add a second beast there. So right in, in when you're playing with the non-thematic boards, you put one beast in the lowest number land that doesn't have a pre-printed setup icon. That is number seven on board, uh, land number seven on board seven, on board F, sorry. Uh, and so you're just adding a two beast in, in land seven instead of the one and just add one of your presents there. We're going to put a town on land eight. We're going to put a city in land two. And then as a final step, oh, there's going to be another city in land four. And making sure I'm not missing anything with the escalators for Sweden. Uh, another city in land four. And then, yeah, if there's blight in land four, that would move to five. There is the blight in land four. So the blight from the, the starting board would actually go to five instead. And then as the final escalator, we're going to discard the top uh, invader card. And we're going to add a town to a jungle with the fewest invaders. So that is going to be a town in land five. All right, now we're going to do the initial explore at the final part of setup. And then we're going to do an initial explore into wetlands. So we're going to get one explore in land three and one explore in land seven. Now, it seems like a small thing. We're just adding an extra town at five, but that does mean, again, just like Hasberg, just like Prussia, we're gonna be in level two pretty quick. And level two evader cards with the escalation for Sweden can be brutal. Uh, the more you can prevent turning Dahan into towns, the better you're gonna be. And there is a card that many minds has that will really help you with Dahan movement to, to really minimize the impact of that escalation. So the escalation is like, it's it's the most in some ways it's the worst escalation if you can't counter it but if you can get the dahan out of the way you're effectively you can basically say all right that's not going to do anything to me bad so you can go games especially with many minds or other spirits that are good with the han movement that that escalation has no negative impact on your game and that's really really helpful when that happens all right that's there so let's look at this board. Growth options, there are three. It's a pick one spirit. The first growth option is reclaim cards, gain a power card. Second growth option is add two presents. Third growth option is add a presence and a beast, three away from where you have presence, gain an energy, and then gather a beast up to, gather up to one beast into a land. It's not even a land where you have presence. It's a land, which is really, really nice. There's so much flexibility with this spirit. It's really cool. Uh, presence track is uh, zero energy to start. One energy, air, two energy, animal, three energy, four energy. I'm telling you now, I will be hot. This is another spirit that I don't really care about gathering energy. I want card players. I want a lot of them, and I'm going to use all their elements uh, because the innates are so strong with this spirit. I will probably get up to either air or animal, but generally speaking, I'm going to do a lot of my, my um, presence putting on the board from the bottom before I get even thinking about the, the top. Uh, line there. So we'll be going from the card play track, not the energy track. The card play track is one card play, two card play. The third circle on the card play track is interesting. It's like you get to gain a power card, but you have to pay two energy to do it. I think I've only done it once in all my plays with many minds on my own. So it's not something that I'm that, you know, it's nice. It's a nice option, but you know, if you have the energy to do it, obviously. Uh, after that, it's three card plays, three card plays, four card plays, five card plays. The innate powers, we'll do the special rules first. The so special rules, as I said, fly fast as thought. Uh, when you gather or push beasts, they may come from or go to lands up to two distances away, as opposed to adjacent only. And then the second one, as I said, adjoining of swarms and flocks, your sacred places may also count as a beast. You may never have more. So if I have like four presents, that still only counts as one beast if I wanted to. And then if something affects a beast and I want to have it affect my sacred place as opposed to the actual beast token, I would just affect two of them. So even if there's more than two presents, there's still only one beast, right? Which is, and, and one beast is only equivalent of two presents. So it just, it kind of helps um, kind of keep that straight. So that's fine. I'm, I'm knocking some Dahan over. We're good there. Now the innate powers, you'll see how strong they are. Uh, the teeming host arrives. 
It's a fast power, range two, target land any. If you have two sky and a beast, you can gather up to one beast token. If you have three sky, one water, and two beasts, instead you can gather up to one beast token per sky you have. And if you have one fire, four sky and two beasts, you could push up to three beasts after you gather them. So it's really strong. The other one is uh, beset and confound the invaders, or you actually don't even need to gather them. You could just push them. Right. As again, these things all happen in the same land and you go in order, uh, beset and confound the invaders. So similar to volcano, there's like a threshold that you have to check. And that threshold has to do with how many beast tokens and or beast tokens plus your sacred place if it's there uh, to see if you've actually unlocked the threshold. These are all defense powers and fear generators. So you have one sky, two beast and two, I'm sorry, two animal tags and two beasts. You can generate two fear, defend two. If you have two sky, three animal uh, elements, and three beasts, instead you can uh, generate three fear and defend four. If you have three sky, four animals, and four beast tokens, instead you generate four fear and defend seven, which is bananas, and I will probably do that at least once. And then I might even get two if you have four sky, one earth, five animal elements, and five beasts in a land. Instead, you can generate six fear, and defend 10. So here's what I was missing about many minds when I first looked at the spirit. And I looked at these cards and I'm like, there is no offense. Like there's nothing that does damage. But what's crazy is that what it lacks in doing damage, it makes up for in a control and movement, movement, moving Dahan. And then you have the event cards that will allow you to do damage for the number of beasts you're likely going to run into one of those in a game in a, in a game uh and then it has so much defend it also has ability to say to to make the invader skip actions and all of that does is just it creates this environment where it's like yeah like you might not know how you're going to get the damage done but between the dahan fighting back and between the beast tokens and between other powers that you'll get it just kind of sort of happens and in the meantime you're so good at preventing through either defense powers or through making the invader skip actions. You're so good at, the, at preventing blight that you're you're generally going to be able to find yourself in a stronger situation than you might otherwise think. It's a very very cool uh, spirit. All right, I, and watch. I'm gonna get walloped tonight. I'm always like afraid when I like really speak up a spirit, and then I'm like, now I'm gonna play. Let's see me look like a fool cool that's fine wouldn't be the first time so what are we gonna do we have our board set up um i'm going to choose growth option number three as my first growth my first my first growth option i'm going to add a presence from the second uh track here and i'm going to do this i'm going to add a presence and a beast into land number three and let me just get before i just reach a hundred times i'm just going to put some some beasts on the board here just to make life a little easier right so i'm going to gain one energy and then i can i guess i do that yeah that makes some sense all right and then i can gather another beast if i want to i can gather up to one beast into a land i actually don't want to i don't think that's gonna make any sense for me all right so my first so i unlocked my second card play so i have two card plays this turn i get zero energy from the presence track i'm going to or from the energy track in the presence uh phase uh so i'm going to play ever multiplying swarm multiplying swarm i don't know what multiplying is but it sounds delicious and i'm also going to play uh, a dreadful tide of scurrying flesh <laughs> the titles of these cards are awesome so let's take a moment we'll go through the five power cards you do have just like finder had six uh, many minds does have more than four as well it has five so ever multiplying swarm it has a fire tag earth tag and an animal tag uh, slow power range zero target land any add two beasts great a dreadful tide of scurrying flesh fast power range one away from you have a sacred place oh 
I need a sticker place there to do that. That's fine. I'm going to play uh, Pursue with Scratches, Pecks, and Stings instead. So fast power, range 2 from where you have presence. Target land has to have a beast. One fear for each beast you have past the first. Push one explorer or town. Great. Uh, and that is not up to you. That is mandatory. So you have to be careful with that card. Sometimes you, I don't really want to push that, but you have to. <laughs> it's a mandatory thing. Um, so you're going to want to be aware of that as you go. The other power cards I have are all crazy. So Boon of Swarming Bedevilment. For the rest of this turn, each of Spirit's presence grants defend one in its lands. All right. So it's target another, another, uh, another spirit. Right, so obviously we're targeting ourselves because it's a solo game, and then you can push up to one of your presence into any land that you want, and then you get that tar that defend ability, right? And that extra tick, like that one defend here, two defend there, can make a big difference, especially when you're up against Sweden, when the towns are doing three damage and the and the cities are doing five, right? So really, really helpful card. A dreadful tide of scurrying flesh. Uh, it has a moon. It has a sky, water, animal. Those are the elements. It's a fast power, one away from you have a sacred place. Target land has to have at least two beasts. Now it could be one beast in a sacred place. Remember, because your special powers. Uh, remove up to half round down of your beasts in the target land, and it's up to you. Don't have that. This is a thing you can just remove one if you want. For each beast that you remove, two fear and skip one invader action. So cool. That's another good one. And then you have Guide the Way on Feathered Wings. And this should come in really, really big for us against Sweden, trying to avoid that escalation. Move one beast up to two lands. As it moves up to two, Dahan, or Dahan may move with it for part or all of the way. That's so awesome. Right? So, the, um, so I don't know if they're like Gryffindors from Harry Potter or not Gryffindors. What are the, the Hippogriffs? My Mrs. Playthroughs is ignoring me. She is the, the resident Harry Potter expert. So, um, how? I love, yeah, 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 for sure. Hey, Randy, thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate that comment for sure. Um, yeah, so I don't know if they're like hippogriffs or what the heck they are, but they can carry up the Han and just move them. And it's really, really cool. Um, I think my wife's impressed that I know what a hippogriff is. So, I barely know what a hippogriff is. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> Dude, I should have I should have thrown in some Harry Potter references in my like Mrs. Playthroughs video. See if I could have thrown her off. Um, all right, here we go. So I'm gonna play. Uh, do uh, let me look at my my elemental threshold. I I have nothing. Wait, no, I do have something. Cool. Let me, let me unlock that right away. So I have one. Where are my dice? Here they are. So I have one sky. I have two uh animals and i can use this now i can use it just for the fear so why not let me do that so i have this unlocked i don't have two skies so i don't have anything in the teaming host arrives but i do have the first level of beset and confound the invaders so i'm going to target a land with invaders i'm going to target land seven i'm going to generate two fear off the top which is great and i'm going to get a defend two in that land they're not ravaging there this turn who cares i still get the fen two and the two fear that works for me all right, and in case I pull something that says Ravage in one land, great. I can just Ravage there, it's defended to, we can call it a day. Um, it's only an Explorer there now, but, you know, it is what it is. So that's not. Pursue with Scratches, Pecks, and Stings. The artwork on that is hilarious. It's basically a bunch of invaders just with, like, these little birds. It's like an Alfred Hitchcock, Hitchcock movie, man. It's crazy. Um, so I'm going to target land seven. I'm going to generate a fear. And then for each beast past the first, so I only have two beasts there, so for each beast past the first, so only one, I'm going to push one explorer or town. I'm going to push this explorer out of seven into four. Not going to build there. Golden. All right, so that's done. Now I have the rest of my powers are slow. We're good. We're going to go to the invader phase. The invader phase, we're going to take Jagged Earth rules. We're just going to flip the top event card. We're not going to resolve it. And then we go to the invader steps. The invaders are going to build in wetlands. We're building in land three. There's nothing to build anymore on land seven because many mines is amazing. And then we're going to now explore into sands. So we're going to explore into land eight. We're going to explore into land one. Invader cards advance. My only slow power is ever multiplying swarm. I'm going to add two beasts into a land with my presence. 
Now I'm going to put two beasts right there in land number three. Now remember, they are ravaging with a ravage of four in land number three because that town is unfortunately doing three damage as opposed to the normal two. So that is something we're going to have to address next turn. Great. I'm going to, time's going to pass. I'm going to uh, now go back to growth. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do the middle option. I can add a presence, one away from where I have presence, and then I can add another presence uh, in a land where I already have presence. I think this makes some sense. I'm going to put two presents in land number eight. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Now remember that that counts as a beast, which is crazy. So we're going to play these three power cards because I unlocked three power cards. They all cost zero, so I have no energy, but I don't need energy because they all cost zero. So we're going to have three skies. I'm going to get that. We have three animals. I'm going to get that. We have one, we have two waters. We have no, the only other element that might have mattered is if we had a fire, but it actually one of those because I, I, I couldn't get the last threshold of the teeming host arrives anyway. So we're just, that's, those are elements for the turn, which means I have unlocked the second level of the teeming host arrives and I have unlocked the second level of beset confounding invaders as long as i'm targeting a land that has three beasts i am i'm going to target land three great i generate three fear the fear generation with the spirit is just bananas uh and i'm going to be defending four in land number three done now what else do i want to do i want to gather into land eight i can gather up to i can gather there's many i can gather one beast per sky i have i have three skies so i'm going to gather these two beasts into land eight now remember i could actually gather a beast from land three if i wanted to i don't but again it's two away when you gather or push you can go two away instead of one so that's fine cool a dreadful tide of scurrying flesh i'm going to target a land one away from where i have a sacred place i have a sacred place in eight i can remove up to half the beast uh, rounded down so i'm going to remove one beast I generate two fear for removing that beast, which gives me a second fear card. And then I get to skip one invader action. Don't mind if I do. Let me skip an invader action in land eight. And what am I going to skip? I'm going to skip that build because why do I want another city on the board if I can prevent it? Now, what are we doing with the rest of this? I'm going to... Cool, so I've done that. Uh, again, so that's in place. Nothing's going to change with that. Now I can guide the way on feathered wings. I really want to try to prevent that escalation of Sweden, right? So the more I can kind of uh, put Dahan in a place where they're not going to be potentially turned into towns, depending on what that that second uh, that first stage two invader card is, the better. So I think if I gather this beast. Uh, so basically move one beast. So I'm going to target land eight. I'm moving one beast up to two lands. I'm going to move it into land one. And when I move it, I can pick up as many Dahan as I want. I'm going to pick up this Dahan. So what that effectively has done is the only land that's at risk of a Dahan becoming a town is land three. That's it. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. But you know, it's, a, it's a really solid place to be. Because a lot of times against Sweden, you're in a place where it's like, look three quarters of the cards I pull are going to give me the situation where I'm going to lose another Dahan to a town. And then it just kind of snowballs from there. So being able to use that, obviously I'm not using that. I mean, the part of, if this was two away, if I could pick up this Dahan and move it into land three to get more retaliation during the ravage action, I would, but I can't because that I don't have the movement uh, of the, the beast. But let me just get that Dahan away from land five into land one. And I know that I'm going to have this card back next turn. So if I want to move the Dahan back where they can do a fight back, then I'll have it. So it's, it, it's going to work out fairly well for me there. All right. What's the last thing I can do? I can move a, I'm going to target myself with Boon of Swarming the De Devilment for the rest of this turn. Each of my spirits presence will grant defend one in its land. I'm going to gather, uh, and then I can push w up to one of my presents. I'm going to push this presence into land four for the sole reason of getting it 
closer to the center of the board and, and have it more of an opportunity where maybe I can link it up with another one of my presents and make it into a beast, right? So there's a whole bunch of things that can happen there. So that's all my powers. You will notice a lot of my turns. I will not have a slow power. It is, this is a, this is a fast and furious. It's like lightning meets fangs meets insanity. It's, it's so good. All right, let's go to the uh, invader phase. We're going to pull the event card. What do we got? Hard working settlers. The latest round of settlers are regrettably diligent, focused, and curious. You may act cautiously in the background. If I do that, on each board I push up to two Dahan and I add one town to a land without a town. Not great. Then I would immediately ravage in a land with the most invaders that matches a ravage card. Okay. Or, at the cost of piquing their interest, ravage cards skip up to one matching land on each board. Okay. Uh, and then one fear per player, and then I remove the bottommost stage two and the bottommost stage three cards from the invader deck from the game. I kind of love that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to create unnerving distractions. I mean, honestly, if we're going to, I, I, I kind of like removing the bottom stage two card against Sweden. We don't have to worry about the escalation. It is what it is. And if we're going to the bottom stage three deck, we're going to be dead a long time before we get there. So let me do that. I don't want to add another town. Not against, I don't have a lot of damage powers. I don't think it makes much sense. It's going to be easier for me to control things. So the bottom most stage two is out and the bottom most stage three is out. So now our invader deck got a lot smaller, but we do generate a fear. And that is that. All right, and we can skip. I'm not. Yeah, I'll just have it skip the Ravage and land seven because, I mean, I'm going to defend it in land three, so I don't want to skip it there. So we're good. All right. Be uh, beast prey on the injured. This turn, beasts also count as bad lands. Destroy a damaged invader in a land with a beast. Well, that would have been really bad. <laughs> uh, if this was only defended three, that would have been epically bad because then that Dahan would have been destroyed uh, and then I might have actually chosen to skip that there but since we're defended for the there's not going to be a single point of damage onto the Dahan so the Badlands effect wouldn't actually trigger um, so that actually worked out you know just about right so in your chat really likes mines. this is mines <laughs> Sarah was telling me that somebody likes mines I'm like yes <laughs> um, yeah it's, mines is uh, is awesome all right let's go to the fear cards i have two fear cards because again mines is awesome uh we're gonna do terror level one each player adds a strife to in a different land with at least two invaders so i'm going to add a strife in a land with two invaders i'm going to add it to the city because that makes sense i mean i could could add it there Nah, I think it's better to add to that city. All right, we're good. That's done. And then, because again, the more we can prevent that six damage done to the land, the one we're about to double blight. I mean, there's so many things that, that we can do here that will be helpful. All right, and then each town destroys one explorer in its lands. That's great. Scapegoats. So that Dahan is dead, and that, I'm uh, not uh, Dahan. That explorer is dead, and that explorer is dead. So I removed the explorer from three, and I removed the explorer from eight. We now go to the invader steps. We're ravaging in three. Now I'm defended four. The Dahan, the Dahan fight back. It's going to destroy that town that generates a fear. We're skipping the ravage in seven. There's nothing there anyway, which is great. And now we are building. I'm, I've already skipped the build action in eight, thanks to a dreadful tide of scurrying flesh. And now we will build a town in land one. Ooh, so I guess land one is also at risk. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah, it's fine. But at least I got two Dahan there. So we'll see. We'll see what this is. Stage two card, Coastal Lands. Nice. Don't have to worry about the escalation. Makes me happy. We get an Explorer into land one. We get an Explorer into land two. We get an Explorer into land three. Invader cards advance. I have no slow powers. We go to time passes. Ding. These five cards, I'm going to reclaim my cards as my growth options. So doing growth option one, and I gain a power card. My options, Twilight Fog brings madness. 
It has a sky, but not an animal or element. I'm just going to talk about the elements that are relevant. Those are the two I'm looking for. They add a strife, push one to Han. Each remaining to Han takes one damage. Call to guard. It has a sky. Gather up to one to Han. If there are to Han present, either defend one per to Han or, ooh, so I can defend four and land one, which is great. Um, or I could choose to, after invaders are added or moved to target land, one damage to each added or moved invader. I have dry wood explodes and smoldering splinters. I can target any land where I have presence that is not a wetland. And I may spend one energy to make this power fast. Two fear, one damage. It's nice because it's a damage card, but the, it costs one energy. It doesn't have an animal. So there's, there's more I don't like about the card than I like about that card. And then finally, we have Elusive Ambushes. It doesn't have either a Sky or an Animal. Uh, one damage or defend four in a land with the Haunt. I have no shortage of, of um, ability to defend with my Innates. But I do like that Call to Guard allows me the ability to start moving. Uh, use the Dahan so I can potentially actually... Uh, I get the sky, which I'm going to want, and I can potentially actually get defend in two turns by also um, some moving some Dahan around. Uh, this guy is this kind of. Uh, I'm still worried about that escalator. We'll see. I'm going to take call to guard. I just think it makes the most sense. It doesn't cost anything, which is helpful. And we'll see how that works. Great. So I have three card plays. I want to play. Hmm. Could do that. Like prevent the build in one with pursue with pex scratches pecs and stings. I can defend in I'm sorry, I can prevent the build in three. I can defend in one. I like both of those. I guess the real question is what's the last thing I wanna do? Oh I can. Oh that's so that's really nice. <laughs> Uh, it's ravaging here, which I don't love, but I should be able to get a defend to there. Should be pretty nice. Yeah, we'll do guide the way on feathered wings, and I might reclaim these cards at the end of this turn. We'll see, and just kind of do this again, but. Uh, it's a sequence that I wouldn't prefer, I wouldn't like with a lot of with a lot of uh, reclaiming cards two turns in a row this early in the game is probably a bad idea with most spirits but with this spirit it kind of works. So I have three sky, I have two uh, animal tags, I have one. I have no. That's fine. I have no sky. I have no water, but I do have a fire. But ultimately, that's only going to give me the first level of the teaming host arrives, and it's going to give me the first level of beset and confound the invaders if if I can get two beasts in a land. I'm going to do call to guard. So I'm going to gather up to one Dahan. I have four Dahan in land one, and then I'm going to be able to defend that with a defense of four. All right, I'm going to play pursue with scratches, pecs, and stings. I'm going to... Generate one fear off the top for each beast past the first. I can push. I'm going to push this guy from three into four. I don't want to push him into two because, again, the more I can kind of limit how many what's going on in two, the better. So I'm going to prevent the build in three. I'm going to then gather a beast. Yeah, this will be nice. That's the only... The mountain's going to be a little vulnerable, but I think that's fine. So I'm going to gather a beast. I can gather from two away. I'm going to gather this beast into one. Nope, lied. I'm going to gather this beast from three through four into eight. And now that I have two beasts there, remember my sacred place and a beast, I'm going to generate two fear off the top. 
This gives me a fear card, which gets me to Terra level two. And I'm gonna defend two and land eight. Only it's ravaging three. Oh, you know what? I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna leave that there. I am gonna gather, I'm gonna use um no, that's fine. I'll do that. I do want to get a Dahana to there as well. You know what? I'll gather this beast. So let's go back. So the teeming host arrives. I'm going to gather this beast into land two. I think that makes some sense. And then I'm going to use guide the way on feathered wings. I'm going to gather a beast. I'm going to move a beast from target land one. So it's, oh, I don't have presence there. What? Let me think about this. I do not have presence there. I don't have presence within within range one. So, all right, let me do the teaming host arrives. I'm going to gather this beast here like I thought, and I have to defend too. So I did the teaming host arrives. I gathered from land one, and I moved, uh, and I did a defend two and land eight. I'm not going to be able to do a, a get a Dahan in there and do a fight back unless the fear card's up, which is totally fine. Uh, but then I am going to use... Guide the way I feathered wings. I'm going to target a, a land that is one away from my high presence. I'm going to move a beast and up to two Dahan. Let me get this Dahan out of the danger zone. Oh, I can do it that way. That's fine. Um, yeah, so I'm going to move a beast and I'm going to move this beast into eight with the Dahan. And then I didn't need to even do that. Then I'll gather this beast into land two. So review, I use a teaming host to arrive to gather the beast from there into land two. And I get a target land from two away. And then I use guide the way on feathered wings to move a beast from one of my lands two away. And I moved it into eight and I picked up the Dahan in three and moved it with me to eight that way. So now either mountains or sands is vulnerable with the escalation. So that's not great. But I, I think that's the best way to make this work. So I'm really hoping to pick uh, jungle or wetland. So it's like 50 50. 50. Do you have time to um, answer a question? Yo. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, Tabari. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty big. I'll tell you what, like, I um, I almost didn't back it. I was like, I love Jagged Earth and, and, I, and I love the Branch and Claw so much. I was like, yeah, it's what I mean, 12 more spirits. Uh, and then as I just kept, you know, getting more and more, so I was like, all right, how do I not? I mean, the price was was ridiculous for what it is. Um, it's a game changer, big time. I mean, it, it just, to me, it allows you to see the island from so many other angles. You know, there are so many spirits that feel a lot more niche, right? I mean, you have a spirit that's like, this is the spirit of disease. This is the spirit of strife. This is the spirit of, of movement. This is the spirit of time. And like, there's so many... Um, interesting things in the spirits, but the execution is at a level that I I didn't, you know, I, I've I've never I've never felt that about an expansion the way I do about Jagged Earth. It's so good. Um, is it essential? I mean, I don't, look, if you love Branch and Claw, and you're already into the tokens, I think this just brings it to a whole new level of just awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. It's, it's really good. So I would say it's 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 a pretty solid game changer. For sure. Um, but that's also something I played a lot of base game and a lot of Branch and Claw before I got Jagged Earth. Um, I mean, I remember, I've told this story before on the channel, like the first time someone said to me that Branch and Claw was kind of like, you know, an essential expansion. And my friend Steve and I were like, this list lady is bananas. <laughs> because at that point, I couldn't even fathom adding more complexity. You know, I already found this game brain burnery enough. And then when I finally got comfortable with the system and I had a branch of claws, like, oh, she was not joking. It, it really changed a lot. And Jagged Earth was just, it's more, it's just more Spirit Island. And like, that's the cool thing about it. You never, there are times, like I've said, like Russia feels like you're playing a different game to some extent. But for the most part, it all feels like Jag. it all feels like Spirit Island. It all makes sense. It's all integrated. It's all just really brilliant. I mean, again, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I can't, I cannot. Yeah, Tony. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I can I can gush about this game for hours, and I'm sure it's super annoying. <laughs> so, all right, that's that. So sorry for that confusion. I just I was really trying to not make my my more than one Dahan vulnerable, but obviously, um, I think that made the most sense. But having this Dahan there, 
is going to allow me to you know wipe out that town assuming the invaders don't have their uh, ravage actions augmented by the event speaking of the event let's go what have we got smaller ports spring up on each board with at least with exactly one coastal city we have a board with exactly one coastal city add a town to a coastal city a coastal land without cities Urgh. well I don't want to add it in three because it's going to build a city and I'm looking at the rest of this event card which is totally legit I am going to add it in one which is going to look bananas I can add it to one because one doesn't have any coastal cities and we will be able to address that later on this action it lands with disease or strife invaders skip ravage actions I do not have disease or strife in land one neither do I have disease or strife in land eight and that is great Settlers encroach too far. Choose a land with both towns and Dahan. Push one town per two Dahan. So that's not great because that does mean I have to. This, this is the only land I have. Ooh. Ah. I really want that retaliate. I want to start wiping some things out. But do I really want to build a city in three? Ugh. None of this is good. My options are either push these two. I have four to hunt there, thanks to call to guard, um, or do I build a city down here? Wow. I changed my mind. I'm going to add a town to a coastal land without city down there. I don't like pushing two towns inland and not destroying anything. And I will have a ways. I will have ways to address land three next turn so i think this makes the most sense but that's all sorts of unfortunate you can choose land eight i cannot i can choose land eight but if i put the town in land one that's going to ravage eight and i'm only defended four which is going to wipe out two of my dahan and i'm not i don't want to just throw a, a dahan, but it's i mean it's a really um it's a really strong point i i did consider it and uh, I just I don't like the idea of of how adding a blight and then having to to do that. So hopefully the fear card will kind of help me there. So settlers across too far definitely can be a unfortunate little Dahan event. Uh, we're gonna get our fear card. We are in tower level two. Each player may replace one town with one explorer in a coastal land. Yes, please. That worked out well. And now we can go to the invader step. So that was trade suffers. Yes, it does. We are going to ravage in land one. We're ravaging five because of Sweden. I'm defended four. One Dahan is injured. All four Dahan fight back. We wipe out two explorers and we wipe out this town that generates a fear. We're ravaging a total of three in land eight because that one measly town that's gonna injure my Dahan. But they are resilient, these guys. That Dahan fights back. Kills that town, generates a fear. So that was a nice little sequence from fear card through the ravage step. We're now going to the build step. We are building a land one. No, we're not. Everything was killed. We are going to now put a town in land three, and the disease is going to come off land number two. So we only added the one town in the coastal lands, which is not bad. And now we do the explore step. We explore into sands. We explore into land one. We explore into land eight. Shoot after invaders explore to each land. If they place as many explorers as there, if there are many invaders as there are Dahan, the Dahan, one Dahan is replaced by a town. So that was unfortunate, but it could have been worse. We've only lost one so far, and there's only one more level two card. So worst case scenario, we lose two Dahan to two towns over the course of this game which isn't horrible all right time's gonna pass i'm going to heal up this dawn they're ravaging in coastal lands obviously there's only one explorer there so hopefully he just gets wiped out we don't have to worry about the build there we are going to worry about two and three they're ravaging six and two so obviously that would be a double blight situation only ravaging four and three so if we're going to get a blight on the board i'd much rather it in three although uh, I got some options there. Great. So what is my growth option going to be? I think my growth option is, well, I need some energy. 
I don't want to reclaim this, I don't think. I don't think that makes any sense. That's fine. We'll do... Yeah, we're going to add two presents, remembering that presents does become sacred places. I have all my Dahan up there. I mean, there is part of me that's main. I should just reclaim cards, but I, I don't, I just don't love it. So I'm not going to. Building a city here, which isn't great. Yeah, I still think, still think this is the right move. Could get lucky with some fear cards too. So if I defend, yeah, this will let me skip some extra beasts on the board. Yeah, I think this is the right move. So I'm going to add two presents into land two. So I can add again growth option two. I'm adding one presence, one away from where I have presence. I'm adding a second presence, zero away from where I have presence. So basically, a land where I already have presence. That's going to give me a sacred place there, which is good. I'm going to get one energy from the presence track. I'm going to play that on top of ever multiplying swarm. I'm going to take a look at my elements. I have two air. I did just uncover the air element from the presence track, and I have three animal tags. I'm also going to get two sky. I'm sorry, two water, not sky. It's like sky. It's just different. And then I have one fire. We, so that gives me the second level of the teaming host arrives. It gives me the second level of beset and confound the invaders. If I can target a land that has three beasts. So I am going to gather a beast into land. I'm going to use the teaming host arrives. I can gather as up to three beasts. I have three skies. I'm only going to gather the one. And again, I can gather two lands away and give myself three beasts in land three. Right? So teaming host arrives is done. Uh, yeah, that works. Cool. I'm going to use Beset and Confound the Invaders. I'm going to generate three fear because I have the second level so I'm gonna have a remainder of two and a fear card and I'm defending four in land three another die cool now I'm going to use the a dreadful tide of scurrying flesh one away from my ever sacred place I have a sacred place in land two I'm gonna remove a beast now I could remove my sacred place but why would I want to do that I'm gonna remove one beast and I'm going to generate two fear which gives me another fear card and I could skip one action and land two. I'm going to skip the Ravage action. That's done. I can gather a presence into land four. I might as well. That's going to defend two more. So I have a sacred place in land four, which is also counts as a beast. And now I'm actually defending six there because of Boon of Swarming Bedevilment. And then I have my only slow power again, which is ever multiplying swarm. Let's go to the invader phase. Vent card, healthy island. The struggles of growth, a painful crux point. Each spirit chooses trade reach for deeper nature. I can destroy two of my presence to gain a power card or leave behind that which restrains you. I can forget a power card, regain two energy and move two up to two of my presence up to four away. Looking at the rest of this board, this event card, none of that's bad. I think call to guard was very situational. Although I could defend five there. Oh, it's not, there's nothing going to be there. I will forget call to guard to gain two energy. That could definitely come in handy. And I can move up to two of my presence. Up to four away. <sighs> the fact that it will count as a beast is helpful. I mean, I'm probably ravaging. Oh, I might double ravage there. Ooh. Let me not move anything because I could always gather beasts. 
into there and I can put two more beasts into there with ever multiplying swarm. So I'm not going to use that last part of leave behind that which restrains you. Again, the struggles of growth is the, the name of the event. Irregular outbreaks. Ignore disease disease builds during this invader phase. One fear per board with disease. We have no disease on the board. And then when invaders ravage, if the land has Dahan, defend two. Cool. So that's fine. We're defending two in land one. It's not going to be enough to blight, even if we weren't. But I'll just put that there. Now we have two fear cards. Terror level two. Dahan attack. Each player chooses a different land with Dahan. One damage there. Well, okay. I killed that explorer. That was fun. And Dahan and Heartened. Each player chooses a different land. Gather up the two Dahan. Then one damage if Dahan are present. So I will gather, I mean, I really just want to prevent this from turning into a town is kind of what I want to do. So I'm just going to gather into there and I could do one damage, but I already killed that explorer. So that's fine. So a few cards at minimum just prevented the escalation from making matters worse, but that would only have mattered if this was a whatever, but there, there seemed to be no point in me creating doing one damage at any land that's there. So, I mean, you'll see where we are now. I mean, we're really eight fear away from Terra level three. So if we can just find a way to destroy these two cities, that's fine. Most likely we're going for a terror, a, a terror, a, a, a fear victory, um, which is pretty common. And Mrs. Playthroughs is sneezing up a storm. So I will say, bless you, my love, as you, you okay? Yeah. All right, we're good. <laughs> I don't know if anyone heard that, so that might have just been weird for everyone. And you're welcome for me making it awkward. All right, we're gonna go. To, we're gonna go to the invader steps. We're ravaging in uh, coastal lands. We're skipping the ravage in land two, and they're ravaging four in land three. We are defended a total of six. It would have been really nice if we got something like one damage per beast. That's where you really can start wiping out some towns. You know, but we just haven't seen any of those on beta cards yet, but obviously we're not struggling. All right, we're building. We're going to not, there's nothing to build in land one. We're building a city in land eight. So that would ravage a total of nine, uh, five for the city, three for the town and one for the explorer. So we'll see what we can do about that. And then the final invader step there are exploring into uh, jungles so one invader there one explorer there one explorer there I actually almost moved these two when I had the option to gather I almost gathered two into land five uh, but then I saw that that would potentially create a problem with the escalation so Sweden does make you <laughs> very hesitant to rely on the Dahan too much because of it could just totally backfire on you but now all we have is stage three cards which is should be fine for us all right ever multiplying swarm I'm going to add two beasts to a land where I have presence, I'm going to add them both into land eight. Great. Eight is great. What am I doing? Reclaiming cards. I'm going to get a power card. Part of me is wondering. So I know I'm going to get one energy from the presence track. Part of me is wondering if I just try to get one of those cheap major powers. There's nothing I really want to get rid of, though, which is part of the problem with thinking that way. Um, don't want them to build a city in five, that's for sure. Uh, it's a little unfortunate I don't have any. Well, I can make that work, actually. I can do some things. All right, let me gain a minor, and then I'll, I'll consider getting a major. Uh, Prowling Panthers, it has a fire and a beast. A slow power, target a mountain or a jungle, one fear and add a beast, or if target land has beast, destroy one town or explore. Scour the land, destroy three towns and all explorers. Add a blight. If you have three sky, this power may be fast. That wouldn't be the craziest thing. We'll see. Uh, call to mid uh, migrate. It has a sky and an animal. Gather up the three Dahan and push up the three Dahan. I really like that considering where am I, I am with the Han right now. And then Unquenchable Flames, it has a slow power. So all four of them are slow powers, a little unfortunate. Uh, range two from a sacred place, one fear, one damage to a town or a city. Invaders do not heal damage at the end of the turn. And if you have two fire, add a Badlands. 
Okay. I think I take Call to Migrate. It will let me get the Dahan where I want them next turn. And I'm probably going to be defending 7 in land 5 next turn. Yeah. So I'm going to play... I have 3 card plays. I'm going to use Call to Migrate as 1. I'm going to... I think I just... And it's ravaging nine in land eight. I think I skipped that. I think I'm just kind of committed to a fear victory at this point. I think that's where I'm at. That's not going to be that useful this turn. Huh. All right. I'm going to play... A Dreadful Tide of Scurrying Flesh, Prevent the Ravage at 8, and then I'm going to play Pursue with Scratches, Pecks, and Stinks. Alright, so I have 4 Sky, 4 Sky and 7 years ago, alright, uh, bad joke, sorry. Uh, we have 1 Fire, we have 1 Water, and we have 3 Animals. That does give me all 3 levels of the Teeming Host Arrives, it gives me the second level of... Beset and confound the invaders, right? I'm going to... So I get to gather up to four beasts because I have four sky, and then I can push up to three beasts. So let me do this first. I'm going to target a land, one away from my sacred place that has at least two beasts. Remember, I have three there, one for my sacred place and two for the beast. I'm going to remove up to half. I'm just going to remove the one. That generates two fear. And then I can skip an action in the target land. I'm going to skip an action in land 8 because the beasts are so overwhelming. The invaders don't have a chance. Cool. Now, I'm going to use the teeming host arrives. I'm going to gather up to four beasts. I'm going to gather them into land 4. And then I'm going to push up to 3. And I'm going to push three beasts into land five. Right? Now I'm going to play uh, Pursue with Scratches, Pecks, and Stings. I generate one fear. And then for each beast past the first, I get to push an explorer in a town. I'm going to push this explorer in town out of land five and into land one. Oh, I don't, I won't have enough beasts there. Never mind. That's not going to work. I'll push it into land four. That's fine. That will do. And we are good. And then I'm going to do beset and confound the invaders. I'm generating three fear off the top because I do. I'm going to target land. Oh, shoot. I would have had to do this in reverse order. Before I moved those beasts out of three, I would have done this. So it did have three beasts there. So then I move three beasts from there, one up there, and then I push three. So before they were moved by um, the teaming host arrives, I would have targeted there. I would have done three fear. This would be a remainder of two. And I'm going to defend four. Obviously, they're not ravaging there this turn, but we're defending four there anyway. And then I would have done the teaming host arrives, where I gathered again one beast from eight, three from four into three from three into four, and then push three into five and then i did the thing with a dreadful tide of scaring flesh i'm sorry with a uh, pursue with scratches pecks and uh stings cool so that's done we are now going to go to the invader phase what do we got event card well prepared explorers for the rest of this turn explorers have plus one health i will mark that hopefully remember that uh each beast generates one fear if invaders are present Moves to an adjacent land if not. Well, that's actually kind of nice. So I'm going to get one fear for this beast because there's invaders in land four. And then I'm going to move these three beasts into land two. I'll pretty much want them there anyway. And then on each board, add one Dahan to an inland land with Dahan coming of age. There are no inland lands with Dahan. So that does not apply. Now that we just have the plus one per one plus one health per explorer. All right. Dahan reclaimed fishing grounds. Each player chooses a different coastal land. And each gather up to one Dahan and then one damage per Dahan. I will gather 
one, we're not worried about the Escalator anymore because we have stage three cards. We're going to gather a Dahan into land two. We're going to do one damage. I can't even kill the Explorers. They have plus one health. So I'll injure this city and it's just going to heal itself, which is, it just is what it is. Great. So we're going to do the Invader Steps. We skipped the Ravage in land eight. Thanks to a dreadful tide of scurrying flesh, we're going to, there's nothing to Ravage in land one. We're now building. Nothing to build a land five. We're going to build a town in land two. We're now exploring. We're in stage three. What do we got? We got sands and montañas. So we got an explorer in land eight. We have an explorer in land one. We have an explorer in land six. And then an explorer in land four. Invader cards advance. And then I can call to migrate. I can gather three more Dahan into land two. Cool. Time passes. That city is going to heal. They are ravaging a total of five for the city, three for the town, and then one each for each of the explorers. They are ravaging a total of ten in land two. What am I going to do? I am going to... Oh, I might actually do that uh, get a card thing. A little risky, though. Nah, I'm not going to spend two for a card. Do I want to do that? No, I don't want to do that. So again, I could get myself four card plays and then spend two, get a card but I have to get a card that has that cost zero that has an animal, otherwise this is not worth it. Or I just get myself the animal tag this way, which I think makes more sense. We'll just do, we'll play it safe. All right, so I'm going to get a presence from there. I'm going to add, so I'm using growth option two. I add a presence. I'm going to add a, so one away from a land where I have presence. I'm going to add a presence into land. Oh. I should have generated more fear. Yeah, each fear generates each beast generates one fear if invaders are present. I have one beast in two, one beast in three, and one beast in eight. That is three more fear. Yeah. Yup, yup. So three more fear. So I would have actually generated I didn't destroy anything in the ravage phase. Uh, so that would have been earned in the fear card phase. So both of these cards would have been terror level three. So I would have done two damage per Dahan. So I would have actually wiped out an explorer. Because uh, it's again, Dahan reclaims fishing grounds and then terror level three for beset by many troubles. Every uh, Badlands, Beast, uh, Disease, Wilds, or, or Strife grants defend three in its land and adjacent land. So that wouldn't have matter, which is great. Um, so yeah, I hope people kind of follow that. So I had three more fear because again, these are beasts, um, and your beast, your sacred places may also count as beasts. That's not only for your actions; that accounts for all actions. So this token action, I would have generated each beast generated one more fear, and there were obviously invaders in all three of those places. So it just kind of changed those things up. So sorry about that. We're gonna now add two more presents. I'm gonna give myself a beast in land one because why not? Uh, no, I'll give it a land six. I have so much presence on this side of the board anyway. I'm going to pay for that. I have three card plays. My uh, elements are I have one fire, I have one wetlands, I have three animals, and I have... Well, I actually have four animals. Uh, three on my cards, one on the board, and I have three skies, two on the cards, and one on the board. Cool. I'm going to give myself... The second level of the teaming host arrives. I do not have the third level because I do not have four skies. And I have the third level of beset and confound the invaders. Now, I have four. I already have four beasts in land two because my sacred place counts as the fourth beast. So I'm going to have uh, generate four fear. So that's a, sort of a fear card. And I'm defending seven in land two. I will use this die. That's Great, and there's a bunch of Dahan there, which makes me happy. Can wipe out that city, and then 
I'm going to use a boon of swarming to bedevilment. I get to gather, I could push one of my presents. I have three presents in land two now, so that's going to give me one more defend for each presence. So that's defend 10 in land two. And I'm going to move a beast. Well, I have a ton of beast movement. It's doing eight. That should be enough. I will gather. The teaming host arrives. I'm going to gather one beast into land. Well, I'll gather it into land one because I can target land one. It's one away, two away from my hair presence. And then I'm going to use the guide, guide the way on feathered wings. I'm going to uh, use that movement to move this beast, and the beast is going to be the hippogriff that it is and carry the Tahan into land eight. Event cards. Gradual corruption on each board. <laughs> what? That's garbage. Um, <laughs> add one blight on a healthy island uh, to a land with cities or towns. No thank you. Spirits may prevent this by paying X energy on per board to protect where X is the number of cards in the invader discard pile. Well, well never mind. Uh, that's four. I definitely don't have four. So I am adding a blight. Gradual corruption. Land with cities and towns. I do not want to lose a presence. I will put this in land. Yikes. Four. That's sick. All right. Fatalities rise in each land with disease. One damage to each invader. One damage uh, to each Dahan. Or Dahan, I do not have any be, uh, disease on the board. Hasn't had any of these on the board in quite a while. And then blessings of bounty and health. Each spirit may add one Dahan to one of its lands with Dahan. I will add a Dahan to land eight. Fear cards. Terror level three. We are going to each land with two or more explorers. Destroy one invader per two explorers. Uh, yes. Okay, so I'm destroying this city and I'm destroying this city. It's one invade. Oh, and this town. I have four explorers there. So I'm destroying a city and town on land four. And I'm destroying a city in land eight. That's a ridiculous fear card. Uh, that's a total of five fear. So that's an earned fear card and a remainder of three. I resolve this fear card immediately. Each player moves up to four health worth of invaders from a land with a beast, a disease, or at least two Dahan. I'm going to remove this, this city and that explorer that has a terror level three victory. We're done. Um, beast is insane. It's just insane. I, I've never... Uh, eh, sorry, my leg is cramping because I'm old. Um, I, I've never felt this way about other spirits. It's just you're. I mean, the only blight that got on that board was was because of uh was a, of of, a, of an event card when I was a, a healthy island, which is just crazy. You you um you always have something to do. There's always ways to defend. There's always ways to control. Um. You sorry for having to refigure a couple of things with target lands and then uh, remembering that again those count as beasts get your benefits right the, the, the best way to win games is to remember all your benefits because usually when you're first new to a game you're you're still learning how to get you know all the benefits that come your way when these are beasts that gave me three more fear three more fear got me through more fear cards i got to two really strong uh terror level three fear cards and just was able to wipe out um invaders I, I mean i wiped out three cities with two fear cards and, and that one i mean it does say destroy it's not remove and when you destroy you earn fear uh if it's every move it's a little bit different and i just don't generate that but again was i was never really in danger uh at all against sweden which is which is nuts um so yeah many minds is great there's a ton of movement yeah yeah tony that was ridiculous um i mean <laughs> I don't know. Like there, I'm out of words to describe this spirit. I, I, I uh, and I feel like there's so much um, cult of the new with me, right? I get, I get like so enraptured with every new spirit, right? Where I, I have to check myself because it's like recency bias. When I, you know, I play Grinning Trickster, I'm like Trickster is ridiculous, uh, and then I'm like, I play Many Minds, I'm like Many Minds is ridiculous. Uh, I guess Shroud help. I'm glad I learned Shroud in between there because like Shroud's 
really fun, uh, but it's not ridiculous. I mean, but ridiculous in a good way. I mean, if you're going to go true solo against some of the level six adversaries, you need a many minds, you need a trickster, you need a thunder speaker. Uh, and I think Jagged Earth gave you a really nice mix of really, really strong spirits and then spirits that are very, very heady and not really going to go up true solo against like level six Habsburg or whatever, but they're still really, really interesting and really fun to play like fractured days and finder. Um, what was the other one? I mean, downpour, you know, those spirits are going to struggle more after, after level four, if not at level four itself, starlight, there's the other very high complexity. There does seem to be something with jagged earth where the higher the complexity, the harder it is to win true solo at the higher levels. And I don't think that was as true with the earlier, uh, with the earlier spirits, right? The low complexity spirits in, in, in Spirit Island are the ones that generally struggle the most true solo, right? I mean, it's you're talking nightmares, you're talking, I'm not nightmares, you're talking, um, uh, Shadows, Flicker of Life Flames, you're talking, uh, Vital Strength of the Earth, you're talking River Flows in Sunlight, but, uh, you know, the moderate spirits are always really strong, but I mean, the sh like the, the most, the most capable spirits from a damage perspective. I mean, you're talking Serpent, which the promo pack was still one of the original 12, and then Ocean could just, just wipe things out uh, with a fierceness the others couldn't, and its limitations are more about where could it be on the island. So, you know, I, I do think, Jagger, that there is more of a correlation between, all right, how strong is the Spirit True Solo uh, and how complex it is, and then the moderate spirits are just all really strong. Uh, I, I mean, I can't think of a moderate spirit in Jagged Earth that I'm just not, not just you know, enamored by the potential inherent in it uh, to play true solo against even the, the highest level adversaries. So that is it. I'm looking at the chat, seeing if there's any questions, comments, epiphanies. If this playthrough just had so little tension <laughs> that people just fell asleep 30 minutes ago. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't think of this playthrough, but yeah, there's definitely, you have those wins where you're like, wow, like that just is insane. And, you know, I, I think, I don't know, did I say it, I don't know, sometimes I repeat myself, I'm getting old, but um, there's a thing with Jagged Earth that I never looked at Spirit Island as like a narrative machine, right? I never saw it as a story generator is, is probably a better way to say it. And I think of like Mage Knight as a story generator. And I think of, uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, I think of, um, uh, you know, I think of Arkham, obviously, as a story generator. It's a, it's a very narrative driven game. Jagged Earth to me is really what introduced the story element. And I guess the event cards were always there, but they're just more, they're more varied, they're more interesting. They're, they're like before, there were so few event cards that I just felt like you just kind of see the same event cards game in, game out. Now, the event cards don't have as much of an impact. You know, if we're going on a card by card basis, the event cards don't have as much impact on the game in a lot of ways, but they generate so much more interesting stories. Um, and I think, you know, like what, what Josh, what you just said there is like totally true. Like you just get to these places of these dirty wins, right? Um, one of the things that, that Eric Royce was saying in one of the interviews I was watching where they want to get to the, the game to the point where you should be playing at a level where you're like, I don't know what I would have done the next turn, right? Where you just kind of get into that win. Um, and I think that's a big part of, you know, playing at a level, you know, one of the criticisms of this game you hear a lot is how, you know, you'll know you're going to win four to five minutes before you do. I think that's probably just indicative of the fact that you're probably not challenging yourself enough if that happens to you too often. Um, now, this game, I kind of felt like I was going to win four to five minutes before I did just because I knew the fear generation was such. I mean, I'm five fear away from a fear victory. Um, that was going to happen. I mean, you could have blighted, you know, I wonder what a blighted island card was. So four per player. Uh, yeah, it's one of the originals. Memory fades to dust where you have to either lose a presence or you have to lose a power card every round, which would have been fine. I mean, you you know, I could have had everything ravage uh, and blight and I'm still going to be able to get a fear victory uh, before too long, right? So, you know, many minds has had a lot of things going for it because of that fear generation. Because you, if you like, I don't think I didn't pick up a single damage card in the events. Didn't I? Don't think I had any of those uh, of those events that allow the 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 beast to do damage. I didn't have any of the events that had the 
the, the Daham the Daham are never in a place for me where I could really do much with uh you know one per per Dahan uh damage. Um it was really these two fear cards that were just massive that put me over the edge, right? But we were gonna win no matter what, just the way that kind of played out. But um yes, Colt really strong spirit. I I have not played a game with many minds where I did not get the three card plays by the second round. Uh, if anyone has another way they like to approach the spirit, I'd love to to see it. Um, you know, there, if there's an alternate way that might be a little bit more optimal, especially against certain adversaries. But I, I'd be hard pressed to uh, not. You know, I, I when I went through a game with Shroud, I'm like, oh, <laughs> we'll get the Shroud in a few weeks. But you know, there's definitely a sense of like, we'll see how this goes. With many minds, I just kind of expect to win in a in a way that's pretty uh pretty telling of just how strong and dynamic the spirit can be it's so cool moving the da the dahan around the board it's so cool moving these beasts around the board when you get to that higher level of the teaming host arrives it's like you know you can see it in your head like or i do where it's like you've seen like birds come together and then go away it's like this this flock of uh, of, of animals is kind of going all over the island it's just so it's so cool and evokes um just the right I don't know, the right feelings with this game. It's just, it's so good. I don't know. I cannot wait to talk to this dude. Now, what you're all going to need to do is make sure that when, when Eric's on the channel in like a month that uh, I shut up and just let him talk because <laughs> you've all heard me yammer enough, but I could definitely be singing the praises about this game uh, for, for, uh, for long enough. But that is it. I will have um, Lore on the channel, I think, two Sundays from now uh, is when Lore's coming out. I think January 3rd. Uh, so look out for that. We'll have Shroud on the channel not too much after that. I do have my top 10 true solo spirits that I will have together by the middle of January. That will be my spe my quarterly special uh, up upcoming in January. Really excited about that. And then we will finish off with Volcano. And uh, really just I'm still trying to figure out how what I want to do first once I'm done with Volcano. I, I want to get to the old spirits, man. I want to get Green back on the channel at level 5 and Thunderspeaker and Bringer and Fangs and, and really start pounding, uh, you know, into the rest of this game. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been really cool. So hope everyone enjoyed it. Any comments, questions, epiphanies, as I said, put that in the comment section below. Happy holidays to everyone. And until next time, happy gaming.